In this tutorial we will learn how to use photo match. First you need to import the photo that you would like to use and before you import that file you'll need to select the files type to be photo match sorry all supported image types then go to C drive um, wherever your files kept Alright, so then here we have um, the blank image that we would like to use. Then you can use it as a matched photo. So this is very important that you select this part, then select open. And then what will happen is we'll get these um, access bars that we need to set. And also under match photo here, you can see that we have a few options for how we would like to match the photo. So it's inside. So this button here will take you into an inside mode. Um, and you can see all the grids there, that's the spacing of the grids. So if you were to say like 2 meters, the grid will change. So let's just minimize that for the time being. Uh, the next thing you need to do is just align the axis bars to the image. Okay, so we're just using lines in the image to align to. And with this you can zoom in and out. If you hold your scroll wheel down nice and firm you can pan. So you can pan like that. And I'm looking for one more axis bar and we'll just align that as well. You can see that now aligning quite nicely. Then we can also put the origin down on the floor. So check out this. I've got the red axis going to the right. So I want to put the origin on the floor so it's then touching the floor and the wall. And we also want to make sure the blue axis is right in the corner of this image, which it seems to be. Okay. Once you've done that, you can right click and say done. Then you can go to the zoom extents tool, which is just tucked away there, and go zoom extents. Or you can easily just click on the scene again and it will take you back to the original size. So now that the axis is done, um, what we want to do is we want to create a foreground for the image. So to do this, we can now go into Photoshop, open up the original image, Select open. Once the image is open, we need to choose the method of selection. So we're going to go over to the selection tools. And if you left click and hold down on this button here, you can change the way that you select. So I'm going to select polygon. A polygonal um, lasso tool. Uh, then we can hit this button here, which um, adds to the selection. So that makes sure that makes sure that we keep adding to the selection as we select. Um, you can also zoom in and out if your preferences aren't set. Um, you can go edit preferences, general, and then under general, you should be able to um, zoom in. So. I'll just try and find that. Okay, so it's under tools and you can zoom with scroll wheel. So edit, preferences, general, tools, zoom with scroll wheel. 
and that will allow you to zoom in and out. If you hold the pan, oh, sorry, if you hold the space bar down, you can pan the image as well. So we've got the the lasso tool plus the add selection mode ticked. Now we can go in and start selecting what we want to create as our foreground. So I want to keep this part of the image all the way up, and you can go out past the edge. That's fine. Okay, and I always do it in sections, so I've got that section now, and by having add selection ticked, I can keep adding to the selection. So I'm just going to go, go in here, and just add that first. And you can double click if it crosses over where you started, and it will add to the selection. Then we need to get in here and get the lady. Um, that's if you want to keep her in the foreground. I'm just going to do this really roughly just because this is an example. Okay, <clears throat> then I'm going to add the floor. And I'm going to add it to roughly where the column is. And scroll down. And see by touching the edge there, it's, zoom, it's pulling the, the view over to the left. And there it is. I'm just trying to link up with that selection. Then I'm going to go back to where I began, which is down the bottom there. Double click. That now adds it. To the selection, then I can go up along this column here. And there's also a bridge to add yet, so I'll just go up here and get this. Alright, so that's looking good. Then we'll just get this part of the counter. And again, it's just a rough selection. And if we click on this button, subtract, then it will minus anything that you don't actually want to keep. Alright, and then back to add. So you can just plus and minus your selections. Now we'll crop out that lady for now. Alright. And over here we see that this, is ta this table is actually just like a lean to table so we need the subtract here we're just going to minus that so it's just about you choosing what you would like to keep in your foreground and then back to plus because we want to add more to the selection and again I'm just going to do it quite roughly okay so I've chosen my selection now and once you've done that you can just click on this button here which is the mask button and it's just you just click on add mask and that simply masks away everything bar your selection um, which is really nice because what we're going to do is we're going to add some walls in behind here so we go now to file save as select PNG or TIFF for, for SketchUp so I'm going to select PNG um, and then just go save. Um, and then compression, it doesn't matter too much. So um, we're just going to go OK on that. Basically, if you're doing a, a really nice image, you'd want less compression because it retains the quality of the image. So next what we need to do is we need to create a new view because we want to keep this axis um, 
and we also want to keep um, the position of the view. Um, before we do that though, we could draw the walls. So if you go to the pencil tool, you can click on the origin, go straight up, and you can use your arrows to lock in certain directions. So if I press the up arrow, that will lock it in the blue direction. Click, then I take it in the green, press the left arrow, and that locks it in the green. And we may need to take this quite far out. Then up arrow again for the blue, and then click back down to the start. Okay, try again. So we'll go it's going in the red direction, so that's the right arrow. Tap that once. Take it out past the image, click, up arrow, locks it in the blue, touch the start again, where the origin is, click, and then back to the start. If you orbit, you'll notice that it changes the the view and you lose your photo match. So you just need to click on the photo match tool again and it'll take you right back to where it was. So you can see those planes have gone over that image quite nicely. Um, there's one other thing you can do as well is you can scale the image. So if you click on the tape measure, you can click on your first point and then your second point, and then you can type in exactly how big you want it to be. So we'll go 4000, enter, resize, yes, and then just click on the photo match tool again, and everything now will be relative to 4000. So that height there is about, well, it looks quite small, but... Um, Anyway, yeah, that gives you the idea of how you can scale the image. Okay, so next we will need to create that another view. So we go to View, Toolbars, Turn on Advanced Camera. Under the Advanced Camera, click on the plus button straight away. Give it a name. And then lock it straight away. And that there will retain the camera angle, the perspective and everything. So when I orbit, and then go back to my camera, you can see here that I've got the same aspect ratio, everything's the same as the, the photo match image. Then go to Window, Styles, and in Styles, I'll just make this a little smaller. We can now add a foreground image and a background image. So if we go to the watermark settings, we can click on the plus button, add the original background image, and we'll set this to background under the watermark settings. Next, next, and we're locking the aspect ratio, that's good, and stretch to fit the screen, good, because we want it to fit in there nicely. Then we go to the add button again. This time we select the PNG or the TIFF file that you created, click open, and this is important, this one is an overlay because it's going to be sitting in front of your, uh, your 2D walls. So then go next, next and finish. Okay, then what you need to do, this is really important, is update your scene. So right click on it, update the scene and save it as a new style. Okay, so that will remember what you've done. Then what we could do is we could create one more view. So if we can right click on that view and go add. We'll call this view our work view, so under scenes we could go work, like so, and then we could just go back to styles, click on the select tab, go home, and just select the original style to take us back to it like a normal mode, and then right click on that view and update. So that means you've got your, your image view and then your work view, and that will help you um, work on your walls a little bit easier. So now what I can do is with the uh, pencil tool for example I could go ahead and start drawing on that wall. I could get the paint bucket and just choose materials that I want. Um, and yeah, I can start designing exactly on, on that surface. Another thing you could do is under edit you could go uh, under styles, then edit, then edge settings. You could turn off the profiles so and the edges. And it will look like there's no lines, so it may look a little bit more photorealistic. And then you need to update your style again. And then lastly, once you're happy with your image and your design that you've done on your walls, you need to go file export. 
2D graphic and I'm just going to save this to the desktop and make sure you save it as um, an image format that Photoshop can read. I'm just going to call it um, photo match example. Um, and another important thing is the, uh, the size of the image. If you wanted to maintain the exact same size you just need to check um, the image size there and then maybe go back to your original image and just figure out what the height of that was. So if I go to um, Joe the image size is um, where is it? 2625 high. So we go options 2625 and go okay export um, over top of the photo match example. So just overwrite that. Alright, once that's done, back into Photoshop, file open, off the desktop, we need to open up that image that we exported. And there he is. Then what you need to do is use the crop tool, because we need to trim off the edges because they're excess. So we can click on that and drag it in. And you can zoom in if you need to. So you get the edge. You want it right nice and sharp on that edge. Same on the other side. And oop, I'm zooming in a little bit funny. There we are. Just put it right on the edge. Maybe even a little bit in if you need to. And then tick the tick button. And there you are. You've cropped it. And it's ready to go. Just file and save and your image is now complete.